HD. Good evening, I'm Rebecca Jeffrey. And I'm Horace Brown. Thanks for joining us for Local 2 News at 10. An Odessa home destroyed after a house fire earlier today. It happened over in the 3500 block of Rocky Lane Road around 1230. Our crews could see smoke billowing out of the house. Witnesses from around town reporting seeing that smoke for miles. Fires like this have a certain culprit that often play a factor. Local 2's Ryan Martin spoke with several Basin Fire Departments about how heavy winds have everyone on their toes. Ryan joins us now to tell us how they prepare and if there's anything we can do to prevent them. Ryan. Rebecca, it's pretty simple. When winds exceed 5 miles an hour, don't burn anything. And there's also other steps you can take to prevent fires when winds pick up. A structure fire in Odessa has residents fleeing their home. And Odessa Fire and Rescue has an idea of the culprit. High winds are a factor. Force them out the back out the front door. And the strong winds putting the Northeast Midland County Volunteer Fire Department on high alert. Because when fires do get started here in West Texas with the wind blowing the way it is, they get in a hand real quick. So, you know, we try to get onto them as, as quickly as possible. Fire Chief Matt McClure has some simple advice. Turn off your electricity when you're not using it. Electricity puts a strain on the power grid, which can cause a power surge. A hazard for grass and structure fires when the winds pick up, while also putting other buildings besides the ones on fire in a tight spot. It also causes the other adjacent buildings to catch fire much quick, quicker than it does if, it's, if we don't have the wind blowing as bad as we are right now. The fire awareness also extending all the way to Howard County, where Chief Tommy Sullivan says to be careful in the afternoon when the majority of residents are getting home from work. The thing you do, you know, have, how you handle your smoking materials, dispose of them, don't throw them outside. McClure adds that many of the firefighters will actually spend the night at the department when winds reach a dangerous speed. In the control room, Ryan Martin, Local 2 News. Ryan, thanks. Well, Basin Roads proving deadly over the weekend. A Monahan's man killed in a crash in Reeves County. DPS telling us it happened here about nine miles southwest of Mentone around 1.30 Sunday morning. Reports show 24-year-old Blake Thompson was driving a pickup when he veered across the median and hit a truck tractor. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The other driver was not injured. And a dad behind bars after Lubbock police spent hours on the scene yesterday of what they were treating as a hostile situation involving two babies. This 35-year-old Michael Ortiz, police arrested him on several charges, including firing a gun in the city, a theft of a firearm, and unlawful possession of a firearm by a felony. By a felon. Now, police say all this started when an off-duty officer heard gunshots and saw Ortiz run into a nearby apartment near 34th and Oak Ridge Avenue. The premier, the prim, prim, the premier, the what is the the area was <laughs> set up uh, so that uh, around the complex because Ortiz's uh, twin babies were inside the apartment and he was believed to be armed and dangerous. The SWAT team was called out after two and a half hours. Negotiators were able to make contact with Ortiz and voluntarily come out of the apartment. A rare dog breed worth thousands now safe at home tonight. You'll remember the pet went missing last Thursday just before the West Texas Kennel Club dog show. Local 2's Jessica Vallejo joins us now to tell us how the family was reunited. Jessica. Well, that nightmare for owner Patty Snyder is now over. She says it's truly a miracle to be reunited with her furry family member. The owner of a several thousand dollar dog show reunited with her beloved furry best friend. Just last Thursday, dog owner Patty Snyder lost her Mexican hairless Zolo dog before the West Texas Kennel Club dog show. Pray for her to be back with me. Snyder says she has been desperate to find her furry family member. But that nightmare ended this morning when she received a call. I was just getting ready to drive down towards the people that called me. A lady called me and she said, I think I have your dog. She saw it on the news and I just feel so blessed. I went right away and she did have my dog. Izzy Snyder's fairy baby found across an interstate in Midland. Snyder calling that find a miracle and saying she couldn't have been found without the help of our viewers and the community. I just, I feel so relieved. I do. I feel totally blessed and thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody that helped me. And tonight, Izzy and Patty are together once again and back home in Albuquerque. Live in the studio, Jessica Vallejo, Local 2 News.
Some good news there, Jessica. Thank you. Well, the city of Odessa holding a splash park groundbreaking just in time for summer. The Junior League of Odessa and the city hosting a ceremony for the Jurassic Jungle Spray Ground. That's happening Wednesday at 1. It'll be held at UTPB Park just west of the soccer fields. The $1.6 million project is set to open this May. Staying in the tall city, Casa de Amigos helping to make a path to U.S. citizenship a little bit easier. They are now offering free citizenship classes covering tests as well as the application process, American history, and the Constitution. Classes begin tomorrow at 6.30 at the Casa de Amigos building in Midland. For more information on these classes and you can see how to sign up, head to our website, yourbasin.com. Well, it's one thing to learn history, it's another to live it. And soon here in the Basin, students will have just that opportunity. A crisis simulation center will make historic moments like President Kennedy's Cuban Missile Crisis as real as possible. We visited the JBS Public Leadership Institute to learn how this situation room will connect students from all over the state through real-time audio and video technology. If you're playing a scenario and you live in Brownsville, maybe you'll be on that top left monitor. Maybe there'll be a, the, the person who's playing the role of president will come from El Paso and then will be on the, on the right hand top monitor. The Institute plans to have their first crisis simulation early in the fall semester. I was told this project was made possible with the help from the Rural Digital University grant that works to broaden learning experiences for students in rural communities. We are in your local election headquarters now that Republicans control Congress and the White House. They're finding immigration issues are tougher to sort through at the border than from Washington, D.C. U.S. Senator John Cornyn led a delegation of Republicans to the Rio Grande Valley today. The visit included stops at McAllen border patrol stations, meetings with local mayors, and checkpoint tours. And as somebody who represents Texas, I see a lot of attention to the border that um, I, hope, I want it to be constructive, not destructive of the great economy we have here. In the Senator Cornyn's, Cornyn's delegation continues to Laredo tomorrow. Speaker of the House Paul Ryan is scheduled to arrive Wednesday for his first visit to the Rio Grande Valley. Cornyn, not the only U.S. lawmaker in Texas today. Senator Ted Cruz also stopping by to visit Permian Basin energy producers. He visited both a drilling rig to observe fracking operations and a water pump facility in Midland. Cruz says he hopes trips like these can allow him to learn to learn about and better serve the people of Texas. In a statement, he said in part, the people and businesses in the Permian Basin are crucial to the economic strength of our state. While the energy industry in Texas has been impacted by the recent downturn in oil prices, we are beginning to see a robust recovery. And if you didn't know, today is President's Day. However, many demonstrators took to the streets nationwide to participate in Not My President's Day rallies. Like this one in Austin, similar protests took place in New York, Atlanta, Chicago, Los Angeles, and other cities. Organizers say the rallies intend to send a message to Trump that many people oppose his policies and executive orders. Meanwhile, a San Angelo City Council member facing some heat over comments he made about local police on social media. Councilman Bill Richardson called for non-Hispanic people to document their interactions with Hispanic SAPD officers. The San Angelo Law Enforcement Spouses Association believe his comments serve to incite racism in the community. Our first reaction was uh, one of disappointment, uh, to be honest with you. Anytime a public official um, makes those kinds of remarks that are divisive, uh, it only hurts the community as a whole. Richardson's post drew hundreds of comments from the community. He has yet to comment on the matter. Still to come tonight at 10, we're just days away from the biggest night in Hollywood. Coming up, we'll give you a look at how workers are gearing up for the 89th Academy Awards. And we are continuing to see some pretty big changes out there in the forecast. That means a chance for freezing lows followed by record heat. Yeah, that could be coming our way. I'll have the latest on that after the break. Stay tuned.